Agatha Humuza, please unmute yourself and pray for us. Let's humble ourselves for our prayer. Heavenly Father, I'd like to thank you for today. I'd like to thank you for enabling us to come to this meeting. I would like to thank you for the teachers who have organized it. Heavenly Father, I'd like to ask you that you can protect us as we go through this meeting. Guide us and send your Holy Spirit to the teachers so that they can teach us what we need to learn. Just my prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Agatha. I was just wondering how you are managing to speak to us when your microphone is closed, but maybe you also have another gadget. That is not going to be very easy, but um, that is why we are here, so that we can talk about these things and see the best way around it. So I just want to give you a brief of who we are and why we are uh, calling for this. Now my screen sharing is also taking some time. But briefly, we are a network of teachers. And as you saw the poster, we are the holistic e-learning platform, a network of teachers. And our main reason why we exist is um, really to support teachers in teaching better and in particular using the current technologies but also using projects in their classroom so our code name is help and in its literally sense we are here Network. to seek for support for all our friends are you hearing me mr kaziba mr angela Yes, yes we, uh, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, and are you seeing my screen? And you are seeing my screen? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. So please, dear parents, I would like you to write that URL. It is our home, and we are going to be talking about it. It is where we want to support everyone across the country. And whatever we shall talk about today, um, you will see why we are emphasizing having a one-stop center to support everyone. Uh, since morning, we've been having uh, workshops and uh, we've had, we had the teachers training starting from 8 to 10. We were learning how to collaborate online and to develop joint lessons. From 10 to 11.30, we had our next two physics seminar and we had over 190 students joining. Then from 10, from 11.30 to two, we had the senior three physics seminar where we had almost 200 students joining. And they are, they've been discussing and we would see how helpful it is for students to be able to learn and be able to share knowledge. So we will require you to register and many of you have already registered. So if you've registered, this is the same link, but we shall still put it in the chat so that those who have not registered can continue registering going forward. This program is led by an implementation team. And my name is Ronald Dungu. I'm the team leader. And I also coordinate government and private sector linkages. So if you are coming from government or private sector as a parent, I will be your contact for this program. And we want to hear what is possible within the Ugandan uh, space. Later on, I'll also introduce uh, Mr. Ayubu Kalema. He will come on for, to manage a, a, a session, but he's our technology and financial advisor. He's a teacher at Navisunsa Girls. I'm also a teacher uh, and I'm a physics mathematics a uh, teacher by training. We also have Arthur Ambalule, our secretary and head teacher's link, is the head teacher of Soga College, Mwiri. When he's on the call, he will also have time to say hello to you. We have our monitoring and evaluation advisor, uh, Alan Kakinda. We also have a pedagogical advisor, retired teacher, Daniel Kakinda. We have uh, Grace Nabdua, our gender and inclusive education advisor. And she's also the head teacher of Ungora Girls uh, Secondary School. 
Below that, we have quite a number of uh, leaders in subject teams. We have different subjects and we are setting up more subjects. And uh, on this call, Mr. Kaziba Steven is already here. He's in charge of uh, mathematics, but also other leaders in the different subjects will also be joining in this call. I also want to say that we have uh, Mr. Anjala Chaz, one of our ICT specialists from uh, St. Henry's Chitovu. I've already seen him on the call and they will be supporting. We'll also have Mr. Namdala Baker, who is also going to be joining us to support on the technical side. He's a geography teacher from Navisunsa Girls and many more teachers on this call within our network. We welcome them. This project started as a project in four schools. And our question was, are schools ready to share amongst themselves? Can they develop collaborative activities? So we took on St. Mary's College Isubi, Navisunsa Girls, Busoga College Mwiri, Gayaza High School. And we've been learning with them since 2019 to see whether it is possible to collaborate. And as help, we stand in the middle of that circle and we continue to connect other schools. And right now, we are scaling up from the four schools to quite many more schools. It also started as a project within a few subjects, and now we are scaling up to other subjects, although COVID has taken a toll on us. So what was it that drove us or motivated us to move on? We had experience as teachers in organizing physical interactions. This picture shows an interaction between Gayaza School and Soga College Mwiri. And no wonder they came in as the first schools within uh, the connection. And within schools, quite a number of activities happened. And we thought that we could move those online as if we knew that COVID was about to strike. And indeed, COVID came and we have to think. Achievement so far, we have a partnership now with the Uganda Communications Commission and Research Education Network Uganda. And what is that partnership doing? They are connecting schools to good internet. And so far, 60 schools have been connected. Maybe your school is part of these 60 schools, but we are looking forward that in five years time, a thousand schools will be connected. And then the question is, why are you putting internet in schools? And our answer is collaborative learning across schools. And during COVID-19, uh, the first wave, when they opened uh, the schools, we were able to hold some seminars and we demonstrated uh, collaborative learning. But now we are not in schools and we are in your homes. So what happened? And that is the reason why we are here. So we have developed a platform and this platform is where our shared activities reaching your home are going to take place. Currently, we are working with 450 teachers within our network and they are creating content and planning to run some lessons with the students. This morning, like I told you, we've had senior two and senior three and already in our network, we have over 550 students who are learning with the network during this COVID uh, time. So we are now moving on to um, the senior ones and the story must continue. And the bigger question for us is, what is it that is in the new curriculum and how can we reimagine it within the uh, e-learning space. And your discussion today is going to be very helpful to us. So we hope that you'll be sharing with us um, going forward. So we are going to move on and we shall continue um, giving you briefs about who we are and what we can do as we progress. I don't know whether Mr. Ayub Kalema is already on the call. Um, Mr. Ayub, are you there? Hello, Mr. Dungu. I am. 
Are you yes. able to hear me? Yes. Okay, I am just connecting. I need a minute to pull everything together. My internet this morning has been, I mean, this afternoon has been chaotic. Just a, a minute. I should be with you shortly. Just a minute. Okay. Ronald? Okay. Mr. Yes. Matthias is also on. Yes, um, I want to um, introduce him at the appropriate time, but I want to uh, first of all thank Mr. Matthias Mulumba Motenyo, who is the curriculum specialist at the NCDC. He is the man actually running with the biggest torch for the new curriculum. It is very hard to get him to stay in one place for two hours, but we are glad to say that he accepted to come and speak to our parents, to speak to our students today and our teachers. So Matthias, we would like to thank you for giving us this time. And we want to thank you for accepting to come and share with us what the new curriculum is all about what we should be doing with the new curriculum. What is the role of the parent in the new curriculum? What is the role of the teacher in the new curriculum? What is the role of the student in the new curriculum? And now that we are at home, what should we be doing? What should we be thinking about to enable these students to continue in the right way as prescribed by the new curriculum? These are some of the things that we hope uh, we shall be answering today. We are going to use uh, quite a number of uh, techniques to get your um, information, to get your knowledge, to get your understanding of the new curriculum. We'll be asking you at some point to type in the chat. We shall also be asking you to open your microphones and speak. So please um, let us be active when we are typing in the chat. Let us type when we are speaking and uh, you have something to say, you raise your hand and you'll be uh, selected uh, to speak. So I want to imagine that uh, Mr. Ayub Kalema is ready and uh, we are going to move. Okay. Hello, Mr. Dungu. Good afternoon. And good afternoon, everyone. Mr. Dungu, do you like me to pick up from here? Good afternoon. And Mr. Yubi, you can check on Mr. Ronald is getting some network issues. Okay. Okay, let me just rename myself so that people can quickly identify me. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to you all. You're most welcome to this particular program and this afternoon. I am Ayub Goloba Kalema. I'm a teacher at Nabsusa Girls School. I'm also a member of the project implementation team of the Holistic E-Learning Project for Uganda. We are delighted to have you. And uh, as uh, Mr. Dung was saying, would like to hear from you. Uh, we share experiences. Today is about us sharing experiences with you and you sharing experiences with us. And uh, we'll have our session broken into three. Session one is about um, setting the ground. And uh, uh, Mr. Dung Ronald has, had, has presented briefly about the Holistic E-Learning Project. It is now time for us to hear from you. And we are going to use two methods. Number one, we are going to ask you to type in the chat room, but at the same time, we'll be asking some of you to speak out. So I'm going to ask you three questions. Question number one, what do you know about the new curriculum? What do you know about the new secondary school curriculum? We are opening the chat room. We'll give you two minutes, go to the chat room, and to make sure that the chat room is working, I'm starting it off. I am going to write a short message in the chat room and say, hello, you are all, you are all 
welcome. Now it should feature on your screen right now. And I'm going to ask the question, what do you know about the new curriculum? What do you know about the new curriculum? So that's a question that I need you to respond to. And then, so you uh, type in that. At the same time, there is a question that I would like you to, to, to respond to verbally, especially for the students. So type, what do you know about the new curriculum? And then say to me as well, after typing, what are your experiences about the new curriculum? What are your experiences? If you're a student, what are your experiences about the new curriculum? We are going to pause for a minute to let you use the chat room. So I'm pausing right now. Please hit the chat room. I will copy your responses. What do you know about the new curriculum? Thank you. Most welcome to you too. Thank you very much. We've uh, seen what you have written in the chat room. Now we are going to move to the next stage where we hear from you, especially the students. What are your experiences about the new curriculum? What have been your experiences about regarding the new curriculum? So this is how we want to do it. You put up your hand and then one of us will pick you and uh, you, you respond. What are your experiences? Share with us. What has it been like if you're a student? So, Bwana Stephen, feel free to pick some of the students as they raise their hands. To raise your hand, great, you know how to raise your hand. If you're using a phone, tap the phone, go to more. So let's start with the Aris. Aris, unmute and uh, tell us what is your experience. You might want to switch on your camera if you can, so that we can spotlight you. Great. So. Okay, my name is Aris Chamajapa. I'm in S1, senior one at OSS. Uh, so far, with what we have done, through the new curriculum, we have observed that we have been having discussions, group discussions, and it's learner based, where the learner has to come up with certain notes, uh, has, has to come up with notes, has to come up with explanations for their work, and has tried to bring to life the theories, bring to day to day the theories that we have been studying in class. Yeah. That's, that's great, thank you. Let's go to Paul. Paul? Are you able to switch on your camera, Paul? And then we spotlight you. Mm, yes, so in the new curriculum, I've been able to experience how to do work in group discussions and also how to analyze things. Okay. Uh, though I've been having difficulty in trying to work as group members, as a teamwork, but still that's the thing we are trying to fight. Okay. Could you tell me a bit more about the teamwork? Has it been a challenge or some? Or what has it been your experience with the teamwork in the new curriculum? Mm, some when 
the teacher like gives us an assignment. Some of us say, do this, no, do this, no, do this. Like what goes separate ways. And do you find that a good thing, a difficult thing, an easy thing? What is, uh, what is your experience with group work? Mm, we, though we can try to cooperate, uh, we ask teacher what you can do, this and that. Okay, thank you. So let's go to Motivwa. Motivwa. Motivwa Priska, what has been your experience? Um, for you me, switch on your camera if you if it is okay to enable us spotlight you. Okay, for me, the new curriculum has been nice. And you call, yeah, and you spell the name of the city. Okay, I'm still Priska. Okay, so for me, it's been nice for some other people. And it helps us to be open. Okay, thank you, Priska. I thought, well, the network was not good, but I thought I heard you say that it helps you to be open. I'm not so sure whether that's what you said, but uh, you seem to have liked something about the new curriculum, not very clear to me. But uh, let me go to Evelyn and then move on to the next question. So Evelyn, uh, please unmute. Evelyn, what has been your experience about the new curriculum? Um, I, I'm Alina to Hadley. What about huh? I like the new curriculum is that we discuss in groups. Okay. What I like about uh, when we're in groups, working in groups, is that we're able to discuss points that we don't know. If we don't know a point, mm -hmm. another person can say that answer, then we, then we get more knowledge about that. You, did you say if you don't have points, what happens when you don't have the points in the, in the discussion? Mm -hmm. You said if you don't have points, uh huh, and I lost you there. If you don't have points, another person can give you more knowledge, more points, okay, more answers than points. Okay, and you think that is a great, a good thing? Yes. Okay, great. So now let me be more direct. Let me go to the next question, uh, uh, more specifically for the rest of you. What do you like about the new curriculum, especially the students? What do you like about the new curriculum? I am not able to pick everyone. So I'm asking you, I'm going to pause for a minute, think about it, and then go to the chat room. What do you like about the new curriculum? After the minute, I'll come, and then we will pick a few people who will answer that particular question. Thank you. Let me pause for a minute, hit the chat room. Let's pick it. What do you like about the new curriculum? Okay, we are back. We are back, would like to answer that question. What do you like about the new curriculum? And this question is uh, directed to both the teachers and the learners. If there are teachers in the room, uh, this is an opportunity as well for you to share. What do you like about the new curriculum? So let's raise the hands. Uh, my colleague, Mr. Kaziva, might spotlight some who are able to switch on the video. Let's start with, uh, uh, let me see. There is Smart, Smart Christine. Smart Christine, I think you are the first. Smart Christine, what do you like about the new curriculum in your, in, in your experience? Smart Christine? Are you able to unmute? Oh. Is already unmuted. Okay. It's getting so from the because it has to get the confidence.
Smart Christine? MJ is having some network okay. issues. Okay, Smart Christine is having a challenge with the network and that's okay. It's some, it happens sometimes. So Smart Christine, please type your response in the chat room. Type your response in the chat room. Okay. Let's see, Duncan. Do we, do we have Duncan? It, it has helped me. It has helped me to gain confidence like, in everything, like, just in, like talking to my friends, giving us as in us discussions like that. Okay, so you, you said it improves confidence, did you say? Yes. Confidence, okay. That's a great one. Let's go to Treasure. Treasure, what do you think? What do you like about the new curriculum, Treasure? What I like about the new curriculum mm -hmm. is that it's student-based, like when I was in my primary seven, I used to understand more when the teacher, when, when my fellow student has explained to me, but I used not understand when the teacher has explained to me. But now, since the new curriculum enables us to discuss, it has, it has made me confident. I can discuss and understand from my friend's points. I'm even now confident to discuss in class. Wow. That's what I like about the new curriculum. Uh, thank you, Treasure. Let's go to, so Treasure, it has improved your confidence. You understand better treasure. That's what I, I heard you say. You, understand, you feel you understand better. It is giving you an opportunity to learn the way you would like to learn. Let's go to Christopher. The rest of us, let's continue typing in the chat room. Christopher. Christopher. Okay, Christopher is coming on. What I like in the new curriculum is that you learn how to express yourself freely and you feel like going to laugh at the thing is wrong. Okay. So you learn how to express yourself. You learn how to express yourself. Great point. You learn how to express yourself. I love that. Thank you. Let me go to Eureka. Eureka. <laughs> Eureka, what do you like about the new curriculum? Eureka, are you there? Okay, Eureka, unmute. Eureka. What I like from the new curriculum is that it promotes. It promotes. Audibility and self-confidence. Self-confidence. Which one was the first one? Something and self-confidence? Audibility. 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 You can talk and other people hear you. That's what I thought. Yes. Uh, great. Let's and see. And also thinking. And self and self-confidence. Wow. How about and white? First, mm -hmm. Yes. And also fast thinking. <laughs> and you become fast thinking, just like it. Here we ask you a question and very quick reaction. You went up there and you are able to handle that. How about yes. that? Mm. And you yes. can make your own. Okay. In, the, in the, the the curriculum before, whereby we had to grab things, but now you can get knowledge from others. Whereby, right on the paper, you said I crammed I crammed this from the teacher, so okay. you won't know whether it is true or wrong. Whereby sometimes you have not finished work, you're copying from your friends. 
and you see that notes are not the same. Mm. But this new curriculum whereby they don't give a lot of notes, you can ask your friend and he gives you. Wow. So that one you like a lot. Great. Okay. Now I, I want to take one person, and that will be Paul. And then if there are other if there are teachers in the room, I'm going to ask the teachers, if there are teachers in the room, please raise your hand so that I can give you an opportunity because I've been concentrating on the students. I suspect Paul is a student. We, we gave Paul an opportunity. So Paul, please go ahead. My mm. host just add to, 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 to Spotlight. Okay. Mm. What I like from the new curriculum, mm. we mobilize ourselves in a new study. Like we get new ideas and we try to understand them. Okay. You get new ideas from others. Instead of cramming, you get new ideas from peers. That's a great one. Thank you very much. Now I want to check whether there are teachers in the room. So thank you very much, Paul. I'm checking uh, Mary Goretti. Mary Goretti, you might be a teacher or you might not be. So Mary, she what is. do you like about the new curriculum? <laughs> I am a teacher at Biazani. A teacher, school. yes, great. Teacher Mary. On top of what the students have shared, mm -hmm. there's a lot of teamwork among the learners because we usually give them activities, group activities. You even ask them to get the group leader and the secretaries. So there's a lot of teamwork and therefore it is learner-centered. Mm -hmm. Okay. A lot Is of learners think that the ideas come from the students and then you build from their ideas mm. instead of the other way around, like they've mentioned. They used to simply cram what we tell them, but now you guide them, they bring the answers and you formulate the notes from there. Then there's a lot of, it has a lot of discovery methods because a number of times we tell them to we, we give them work to go and find out either from the internet or any other source of information, and then they come back and share in the lessons and thereafter. So and it teacher helps. Mary, yes, mm -hmm. please. How it does it make you feel mm -hmm. when the students are able to go and research? How does it make you feel and why? It's, it makes me feel great because that means in the end they'll be lifelong learners they can get out and discover other things and skills for themselves instead of simply cramming what the teachers, the teachers tell them then there are a lot of other skills acquired like they mentioned they become confident they develop listening skills just within their groups and even as a class and many others. Maybe I could give a chance to another teacher to add them to that. Okay, great. And uh, thank you. Let me move to teacher Esther. Teacher Esther, what do you like about the new curriculum as a teacher? Teacher Esther, are you able to switch your video on? Or, and it's not a must, only switch it on if you feel it's, it's uh, appropriate at this time. Okay. Teacher Esther, please. Are you seeing me? Yes, we are able to see you, Teacher Esther. Yeah, uh, what I like about the new curriculum is that it encourages the learners to, to read on their own. Okay. And it has really showed us that these kids know a lot of things compared to what we thought they knew. Wow. Yeah. The, teacher Esther, that's uh, an enlightening point that it has enabled you to discover that the students know a lot more than what we thought they knew. I think that yeah. is the statement of the day. Thank you, teacher Esther. Now I would like us to move on to the next one. What do you want for each one of us? What do you want to learn about the new curriculum? What questions do you have? What would you like to know about the new curriculum? We do have an expert in the room, about in the a curriculum specialist, a developer. This is the opportunity for you to ask your questions. And because it is extremely important, I am going to pause for two minutes. 
for you to write down in the chat room what you would like to know about the new curriculum. What do you want to know about the new curriculum? So we are pausing for two minutes, go to the chat room, and then we shall read your comments later. Thank you. Welcome back. We have a number of uh, comments in the chat room, and uh, I'm going to use this opportunity to share some of the questions that you have raised. If your question is not amongst this, then we'll give you an opportunity to read it out, to say it out. So I'm going to start by looking at the questions. I'm also closing the chat room for a minute to allow me to read, because if the chat room is rolling, I will not be able to, to read. So I want to, first of all, pause so that I can be able to read. Okay. And uh, Mr. Kaziba, what are you seeing on your side? My side, I'm seeing the chat. On my, are you seeing the chat? Yes. Okay, great. So I'm going to, 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 I'm going to read it from here. Could you stop the chats now so that I can be able to read? Okay, let me stop. The chat room. It is okay now. Okay, great. So you made some, several beautiful comments and questions. I will first run through them. What do you like? Uh, what do you know about the curriculum? It doesn't require students to overwhelm themselves. That's one. Then it is learner centered, Janina said. Number three, it helps to be active in class. Four, it is based on discussion. Another one, as a parent, I have noticed that they research more. This is uh, uh, Evelyn. Derek said to participate in class and to be active in class. That's what you like. Joshua, I'm Joshua, a student from Chambogo College. What I like about the new curriculum is about group work and to become confident, okay? Another, it enables me to know more about something that I didn't know. So a lot of beautiful comments about what you like. But now I would like, because of the developer is here, to talk about and uh, to read out the things that you wrote regarding you, the questions. Yes? Can you share your screen again? I'm not seeing the chat. Oh, you are not able to see it. Let me try again. Let me try again. When you were able to see it before. Yeah, share the screen again. Let me stop share. Then let me share again. I share. So what do you see now? Okay, now I'm seeing your desktop. And share, I think. Because you are not it shows seeing? nothing. Yeah, it shows, just shows your desktop, uh, what, the picture. It is not okay. showing the... Yeah, it's not yes. showing the chat. Okay. Oh. Mr. Dung, are you able to copy the chat? My, uh, I think I don't have the rights to copy it. Could you first try? Hmm. Mr. Dungu? Ayubu, could you also open uh, the WhatsApp thing? Down, sorry, the, the app again down because I could see the new windows you are opening. Okay. Open another window for, for Zoom. To, op to open another Zoom window? Yes. Hello, Ayub. Can we just continue? I, we, in, this, in this phase, you cannot read from this screen that I'm also seeing where I see the chat room and yourself. Okay. Okay, let, 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 I think what we do, since the comments have been written, 
-hmm. I read the questions uh, as they came in, even they haven't shared, then we can uh, proceed. The good thing is the developer is in the house and uh, is hearing the questions. I think that will uh, save the time to give him an opportunity to speak. So let's see. Bwana Murumba. The questions have come in and there are many. Hmm? Question number one, how can we help the students who can't get access to the internet and the smartphone in the lockdown? That is number one. Number two, I want to know, will the mode of us exams be the same? Number three, how to assess learners in the activity of integration? Number four, how do we get to know our marks? Number five, as a teacher, I would like to understand better the assessment of the students. Number six, okay, you can't hear. Are, are there end of term exams? Another one, are we graded? Mm -hmm. Number six, do we have Excuse examinations? Me, teacher, I don't hear. You cannot not hear. Hearing. Mr. Kaziba, I'm uh, having a challenge. Some people can't hear. Are you able to hear? Yes, yes I hear. can hear you well. We okay. Can't. I think she has a challenge with her. May I assign someone to try to troubleshoot for her as we continue. Yeah. So are we graded? Another one. Do we have exams at the end? Mm -hmm. Another one. Is it compulsory to study Kiswahili? Is it compulsory to study Kiswahili? Yeah. Must we study Kiswahili? Another one. Uh-huh. Are there end of term ex I think end of term exams have become a real issue, Mr. Mrumba. How many subjects are we supposed to learn? Mm -hmm. When we do groups, group work, do group assessment contribute to individual final grade? Do they contribute? What are the compulsory subjects in the new curriculum, Mr. Mrumba? Uh, then someone, at Haire can't hear, at Haire might want to connect audio, uh, kindly type for her, uh, click the screen and then try to connect audio at Haire. We'll send her text please, so that she can be able, she can connect audio. Is Kiswahili compulsory up to form four? How are schools going, choosing optional subjects to be taught? and so on and so forth. The questions are many. We have opened the chat room. Let's continue typing them in. And uh, I would like now to invite Mr. Dungu to take us through the next session. I am not able to read all the questions, but that, that is before the presenter, but trust me, we are continuing to read them. So over to you, Mr. Dungu, to transition us into the next session. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ayub. Are you hearing me now? We hear you loud and clear. Okay, uh, great. The questions are quite many, but maybe um, reflect on them and right now we want to move
into the main mm -hmm. thing for that day. Mr. Mulumba is going to come and some of those questions. Um, we would have a representative from Renew to speak to us because now an internet. But maybe they are on their way. Or if they They don't come, then we shall say the little we know. The new curriculum and its design will introduce Mr. Molemba Mutema Mati. We can't hear you. Yes, Mr. Molemba Mutema Matthias is an experienced curriculum developer. and a specialist at it. He was, he's first of all, the agriculture specialist. Um, it's not okay. Okay. Let's, uh, uh, Mr. Kaziba, pause everyone. I mean, uh, mute everyone, please. Okay. We'll, we will unmute other people. Hello. Okay, great. Mr. Dungu, your connection is not stable. Hello? Hello, your connection is not stable. Okay, are you, are you now, uh, are you able to hear me? And I just uh, yeah. conclude at this point. Yes, please. We hear you, you could conclude that this time so that we can, it is on and off. Okay. Okay, I think we need now to invite Mr. Mulumba to work. Okay. And unfortunately, Mr. Dungu, you are not able to hear you. Uh, those things happen sometimes. Allow me to invite Mr. Mulumba so that he can uh, uh, start. Mr. Dungu, we are not able to, to get you. Can we continue with Mr. Mulumba? Yeah, I think so we can. Let's continue with Mr. Mulumba. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Mr. Mulumba, you are muted. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Yeah. Welcome to this session Good evening. of, of reimagining the new lower secondary curriculum. Yes. Uh, I am very excited to join you in this discussion. And I've learned a lot from the discussion since this workshop started. And one of the things I would like to connection problem. Okay. Mr. Murumba, we are struggling to get you as well. Okay, as uh, 
let's give him a minute while I read out the other questions which we which you wrote. So I'm giving it a minute as Mr. Mulumba uh, sorts out the connection program this afternoon. So we are struggling with the connection. So let me read out the additional questions. What other questions we have? Kindly send this, okay. Okay, Ronald is here. Yes, I lost the network, it seems. Great, you, you, but you are, you are back. <laughs> I'm back. Yes. What I was asking, are you able to pick for me two males and two females to tell us about the new things they have seen in the last three years? Okay, so Mr. Mulumba has fired the question to you. Let us mention two or three things that you've seen in the last three years. So raise your hand and then we shall give you an opportunity to speak. Mention two or three things that you have seen in the last three years. Okay, raise your hand. What have you seen? What have you observed in the last three years? I'm waiting for the hands for you, from you. What have you observed? Christopher, you are the first. Go for it. Right. What, Christopher? Because of COVID-19, the patients are dying. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Even <laughs> lockdown, in the last three years, they are Lockdowns, okay. Thank you. So that's a lady, a female, SHV43. What have you seen in the last three years? I have seen many people dying, and it was very scary. And mm -hmm. the, the, in those three years, there was no food, and it was mm -hmm. very bad. That's what I've seen. Okay. Thank you. Now we are picking one more male and one more female. Let me start with Dan. Dan Oscar. Belinda. Uh, we haven't gone to school and that's really bad. Okay. Dan Oscar, no school. Huh? And then finally, Christine Namande. What, what new things have you seen in the last three years? Besides COVID, no school, no food, death. What new things have you seen? I've seen active participation in agricultural activities and industrialization. Industrialization and agriculture. Okay. Mr. Murumba, you asked me to pick three. I mean to pick two. But the person with the name Destiny cannot be left behind. So Destiny, tell us. I've seen a three. new curriculum, which is fun. You've seen a new curriculum, new which is yes. a new curriculum, which is fun. Thank you, Destiny. Paul, because you had an opportunity to answer a question before, let me move back to the facilitator to let us know why he wanted to ask that question. Mr. Murumba. Mr. Murumba, are you with me? Uh, his audio is off. Okay, we let's send him a quick text. Uh, oh, no, he's gone off now. Okay. As Mr. Murumba comes back, our fellow facilitators kindly monitor Mr. Murumba's uh, connection uh, as, he, as we wait for him to come back. Uh, let me comment quickly. I'll let him know when he's back. What we are seeing in the new curriculum, I mean, in the last three years, has been areas of opportunity. I think some of you have said involvement in agriculture, involvement in industry, 
there has been uncertainty. Yeah? And you have pointed it out very uh, clearly. As of now, we don't even know when we shall be going back to school. Hmm? Uncertainty. It's been violent. We've seen that, we've witnessed that, we've witnessed death. We've witnessed a lot of things. And uh, in this language, we do have an acronym for it. We do have an acronym for, for that one. I don't want to mention the acronym. Let's check on Mr. Mrumba because this is something that he was going to do. So a minute and uh, we check on him quickly. Mr. Kaziba, are you able to see him? No, I don't see Mr. Not yet. Not I yet. He's, he's cut out. As uh, if I keep mentioning things, I'll go into his presentation and uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to instead continue with the questions that you had as we wait for him to get back. We are trying to, to reestablish that connection. So let's see other comments. Paul said, no prayers, no going to school, COVID-19. That is what Paul saw. Are there other people who saw different things? I'll brief him when he's here in the last three years. What new things are happening in COVID? Are there changes in technology? Is, are there changes in the way of learning? Are there changes in the way of being business? What are those things that you're seeing in the last three years? The chat is open, the floor is open as Mr. Murumba comes back. Uh, you can put up your hand and then we discuss this. And what are the implications of these things in the new curriculum? Okay. Feel free to, put, to raise your hand. Feel free to raise your hand. What are those things you are seeing? And what are the implications to you? Paul, Sam, Sam Okelo, what are the new things you are seeing? I have seen, uh, hello? Hello, Paul. We are, I mean, Sam, we are able to hear you. Yes, I have seen uh, a high rise in the, uh, unemployment. People are forced uh -huh. to leave their jobs and stay at home. High rise in unemployment. Uh -huh. People are staying home. Then uh, they can't come. They can't go to work. Prisca, what are the new things you've seen in the last three years, Prisca? Technology has been used, which has not been there. In the past in the past few years like okay. we have set a school learning on, on online mm -hmm. and there is high unemployment like people don't have jobs okay uh, they don't have money like that and That's what I unemployment have. no jobs you're right and then Suleiman I would like you to if you have the audio Suleiman make that comment you have said you have, you have written for us Suleiman are you there Suleiman Hussein has written a very powerful comment in the chat room. Are you there? Yes, I'm okay. here, Mr. Hill. Yes. Uh, we... My comment is that, uh, like seriously, it's hurting seeing my young ones, the, the regiment. In two years, they have been at home, no classes. They're in the same class for like closing now for two years now, and they can't access reading materials because many of them they are in the village and yet they are aged. So you just find them at when you go back to the village, they're just there. They can't get the reading materials, they are aging, so it's so painful. They can't do anything. It is such, yeah, they can't. It's a, such a hurting thing. Sure. Yeah, Hello, are you? Hello, Hello Mr. I, I had got lost <laughs> because of network. <laughs> My I, network took me off. Okay, now are you so hearing me? Yes, we are able to hear you, Mr. Mulumba. Yes. Are you going so, to Mr. Mulumba's presentation in the chat in case you have to run it because my network so is you back. can run it? Okay. So 
I want to start by informing the participants that the new curriculum started because of the many challenges that society faces, like uh, the three which I had picked at the beginning. We have COVID-19, there is lockdown, learning has changed. So the way we used to do things in the past cannot help us survive in the future if we continue to teach in a similar way. So the government of Uganda decided to change how we study. And good enough, many of the participants have said how we are studying under the new curriculum. So the new curriculum has one big aim, one overall aim. The overall aim is to prepare you, the younger people, who have employable skills that are needed in our society, that are needed when you want to get employed. And among the answers that you put up in the beginning of this workshop, I had people saying they want to be confident. That is part of what the new curriculum is all about. We can scroll to slide three. Slide three. So I was emphasizing that government looked at the way we are studying and the curriculum we have been using for the last 100 years was developed in London. And along the way, there were some changes which I'm going to skip because I've showed it on the screen. In 1992, we got the government white paper. In 2006, we identified that in some subjects, what we teach in geography is similar to what we teach in agriculture, is similar to what we teach in biology. For instance, the topic of soil, the topic of weathering is taught in agriculture, in biology, and geography. So that was duplication. Some content was outdated. Like many people who have the parents who are on the workshop here can agree with me that when we talk about the Gezira irrigation scheme in Sudan, it is no longer there, but the children are being told that in senior two, senior three, and four, and five, and six. When we talk about the Canadian prairies, they are not there. The cotton belt in the US is not there. Things have changed, like the first question was saying. In the last three years, many things have changed. We used to have televisions that had a very big back. Now, when you look at a television today, it is flat screen. So things have changed. We had to remove the outdated things. So in 2020, in February, we rolled out a new curriculum. That new curriculum is to produce citizens with employable skills that are required in our society. One of them that the learners must have has been mentioned by you, the participants. You want people who can communicate, they can express themselves. One of the students told us that now is given an opportunity to talk to fellow students and is confident en enough to talk to others. That is what we want to build with the new curriculum. We want to produce learners who can contribute to society. That is one of the key learning outcomes. We want also to produce learners who are lifelong learners. They can search for knowledge on their own and use it to benefit society. We would like to see also that learners are self-assured. They, they think critically and they are able 
to do things on their own. That is being self-assured that you are able to do things on your own. So with all of that in mind, the new curriculum was rolled out and we started with the senior ones of 2020. The bad luck, the COVID came and we were pushed to lock down. So we are continuing to see how best can we learn when we are at home. This workshop is showing you one way we can do it. The learners have told us that they can work in groups. Like now I'm at home here and the, you yourselves, you are in your different places. If we form the group and we have the topic, we can discuss it with fellow friends who are in our group. Because you've mentioned that group work is one of the ways the new curriculum is being approached. And when we look at group work in real life, we don't do things alone. We work with others. So we want to train the younger people how to work with others. One person asked, how are the groups formed? It is important that the groups change every day. They change every lesson. We such that we don't develop people like now, Ayub, we got slide four. We don't develop people. Among those four, whom do we want to develop? <laughs> I have four people there we want to develop. The participants, one or two, can give me an answer. Ayub, can you pick them? Which number out of those four do we want to develop? Number four. Oscar is saying number four. Why? Number four. Dan, why do you like number four? He said it's not too, it's not too big. His body is not mm -hmm. too, it's not too large. His stomach is not too fat. Like Thank you very much. In short, we are talking about a holistic person, a person yes. whose brain and the, the heart and the muscles are in equal proportion. So in the new curriculum, we don't want to produce number one because number one are those people who know a lot but cannot do anything. And the Ugandan is know a lot, but we can't do much. When you allow a Ugandan to talk, he can talk the whole day. Then number two, we don't want to produce people who have very big muscles, but when their brain is are so weak, because they will think like a one time Gorilla was thinking that he was going to beat the Hungarian. Then the Hungarian used the brain to beat his strong muscles. Then number three is, not, is the one who has very good feelings for others that when he's even hungry, he can give away all of his food to the other people, instead of starving himself to death. So we want equal proportions that the brain, the hands, and the heart are equally developed. Currently, the younger children sit in a class from 5 a.m. in some schools to 6, to 6 p.m. or others go up to midnight. And when you ask them, what have you made by studying like that? We have produced nothing. It is only recent that your guang has produced COVID X and it is a marketable product worldwide. So we want to change that. So the new curriculum is learner centered, as mentioned by the participants in the first part of this workshop. We would like the learners to be engaged and to lead their own learning, to be the one who's in the driver's sheet and the teacher to support them. So we got to slide number five. It is important that when, when the teacher is supporting the learners, he looks, he observes the learners. When Kalema Ayubu was presenting, one of the participants 
asked or presented an answer and Kalum are you followed with are you hearing me? Yes. Okay, Sam. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, Sam has something to say. Yes. Can you say it? No, so I wanted to to respond to the question of who is to be devolved, but uh, yes, you can uh, say it. Uh, me, me, I was seeing all of them having issues. So all of I them have issues. <laughs> Okay, that is, which issues do they have? Uh, the first one, I think, was having a bigger aid, but he was having issues with the body. Uh-huh. second one was having a, a, a small aid, but a very big body, so he needed to mm. remove the aid. Mm. Uh, so all of them really were having some issues. The other one was, the last one was very small, Mm. Awesome. Okay. Then, uh, so thank you Sam for that contribution I want to emphasize that as Sam is putting if we develop one kind of person he will have challenges in life it is like here in the what is on the screen now if we judge the fish on how to climb the tree the fish will be stupid the rest of its life and if if you put the fish in the water it will be excellent so we have different potentials all of us and as the participants were telling us that if you don't have the ideas or you don't have the answers to a question, your friends can teach you. So we would like to give each and everybody an opportunity to achieve what he has in his capacity. So it is important that the new curriculum is creating space for the learners to express their potential to show what they can do. And when you show what you can do with your abilities, we call that competence-based. What can you do is competence-based. So as one learner put it, that whenever the teacher was speaking, he could not understand. But when the fellow students are explaining and sharing, the topic or the what is being taught the learner understands much more so if you keep that learner that the teacher will be only talking to him that learner can be regarded as stupid yet the learner can understand if fellow students can support him or her so the assessment needs to change and we needed to change the curriculum because we could not only change the assessment without seeing how it how people are learning we had to do it wholesome that every part of the curriculum the teaching the learning and assessment are all changed and we have changed them to competence based i want to quickly go to how this competence based works one, learning is anywhere, anytime, and for anybody who wants skills. The learners will agree with me that may, in geography, when the teacher was introducing them to geography, for instance, he might have took them to the compound to discover the natural and the man-made futures. If it's a teacher of fine art, for instance, and he wanted the learners to explore the natural environment and see which objects are there in our natural environment. It could be very good that learning is not in the classroom. The learners go to the natural environment. If I wanted the participants here to tell me the different kinds of food eaten in their community, it would be nice that we see the food items 
if we talked about them in the classroom, those who have never eaten them would be at, at lost. They would not understand what we are talking about. But if we physically go to the market where these food items are sold, the learners will be able to understand the food items eaten in that area. So learning is anywhere, anytime. So learning is also connected to real life. Somebody said the learners have to research. They go out, find out. If we wanted to do history, for instance, and we want to know the different ethnic groups in Uganda, you can know them from the blackboard, that is one approach, but you can again find out along the school road and as interviewing the different people, asking them one question, for instance, where was your grandmother living or is living today? That person, the adult you find, tell you where his or her grandmother is living or lived some time ago, will enable you to discover that people have different places of origin. And when you ask the second question, which language is spoken in those locations, then you will discover that one person can say, I was in this region and they, they speak Lugisu, I was in this region, they speak Lukonzo, I was in this region, they speak Luganda. So you find that the language will introduce it as to the ethnic groups in those different locations. So in that way, we are connecting the topic of ethnic groups in Uganda to real life. Then the learners will know that that one is having is his ancestral home is this way. The other thing, learn, learning is owned by the learners. When the learners go and do hands-on, they work in groups. They will own the learning as one learner put it, that when we discuss with our fellow students, the ideas become clearer to us, and the, the ideas come from our friends, we don't cram. So if you are not cramming, it becomes that it is natural, it is within you. And that's how the competence-based curriculum works. The last one, competence-based curriculum supports or is supported by the adults, that is our parents, the community members, the fellow learners, and the teachers. All of those bring in what they know and what they can do, and we learn from them, and also we are able to do that. If we do that, then we got slide seven, we shall produce citizens with employable skills. Because if a learner has gone around and interviewed the people along the community where the school is, then next time, if he's given a task to interact with the community, he knows how to approach them, then his skills will be employable in performing the task. So that is why our overall aim in the new lower secondary curriculum. From the community, we can get innovations where learners can see how the society is being challenged or is facing issues, and the school uses the knowledge available in the school to solve the problems that the society is having. So when we use that approach of teaching, some people are asking, what are the subjects? How have we arranged the learning in the schools? The arrangement of the learning is that we have a menu. This menu has 21 subjects, as one person has put it. But the senior one student and the senior two students should study 11 comparisory subjects. 11. And what are these 11? We have English language, and in the senior one, it will combine with literature. Number two is mathematics. 
Number three is physics. Number four is chemistry. Number five is biology. And there I want to pause a bit. We have learners with special learning needs. Either they are visually impaired or they are physically impaired. When these learners are identified, for them, instead of physics, chemistry, and biology, they will be able to do general science. Subject number eight is Chiswahiri. One person asked, is Chiswahiri comparisary? It is comparisary from senior one to senior two. And in Iwanyange, we need to inform the teachers there that Chiswahiri is comparisary. And we need to advise the head teacher that they have already, education service has appointed 239 Chiswahiri teachers who are waiting posting. The head teacher should work around the clock from today to see that he captures one of those teachers to come and teach the senior ones in one year. It is very, very important. Chiswahiri is comparisary. The reason is that we are in the East African community. And if Ugandans want to be effective in the East African community, they need to know Chiswahiri by yesterday. If I'm training the teachers, I will show them that Professor Senator Zakajubi Daret suggested that we teach Swahili in 1992. But for now, we are too late. And Dongote, the richest man on the African continent, is telling us that Chiswahili should be taught. He's already helping Nigeria and he has gone to Zambia to tell them because he's establishing their companies to tell them to teach Swahili. Already South Africa is teaching, Botswana is teaching, Namibia is teaching, Tanzania and Kenya are far ahead. Swahili is also taught in German. It has become an international language. So the earlier we come on board to learn Swahili, the better. Subject number nine is religious education. And here again, I pause and say that a school which has a foundation body of Christianity will do Christian religious education. The one which has a Muslim foundation body will do Islamic religious education. And it is upon the school to decide how they would like which one to pick, but what they will be learning will be the same. Like the theme number one is worship. Everybody will talk about worship, and we know in both religions or in all religions, we all worship to God. So the themes are the same. Another one is wealth, another one is justice. They are the same themes that the learners will study in a Christian religious education and Islamic religious education. The only thing that would be different would be the reference books. In Christian religious education, they will use the Bible. While in Islamic religious education, they will use the Quran. Subject number 10 is physical education. And here, in the lockdown, one of the things that the president advised us during the first lockdown, that we needed to be physically fit. So body conditioning, making our body active, even when we are in lockdown, is necessary for everybody. A healthy body is a healthy mind, as one saying goes. So everybody should learn physical education in senior one and two, because we would like everybody to acquire the skills and the knowledge of making yourself physically fit, and heresy. So physical education should be taught to all senior ones and senior two in the new lower secondary curriculum. And also, education service has recruited over 200 teachers. So the head teachers should work with the education service commission to recruit these teachers who have been appointed by government such that they can teach our younger people physical education. Then. The comparison subject number 11 is entrepreneurship. And all of you are aware that we would like to increase our resources. Some people call it our wealth. 
Entrepreneurship offers an opportunity to do well in business or in increasing wealth. Because for me, an entrepreneur is the one who can make a profit out of what he has, who can make a sale out of what you have. Like if I have the skills of communication and I can make an, a living out of it, then I'm an entrepreneur. So likewise, we have a lot of resources around us. How do we turn them into wealth? We need to acquire skills from senior one to senior two. It is compulsory for all of the learners. Then what are the electives? The electives, here the learner will choose one, only one out of nine. But the school can choose more than one as a school, depending on the number of students they have. If a school has only 400 students, in senior one, they have only about 50 students. Those can choose only one. But if they are like Mbari, there is a school in Mbari and Koma where there are over 1,000 students in senior one, you cannot teach them only one subject. So you can have a variety, and then you divide the learners in the nine available optional subjects. So agriculture is one of the electives. ICT, information communication technology, is another one. Then foreign languages. These include French, German, Latin, Arabic, and Chinese. Local languages. Uh, now we have 12 of them that have materials, that have teachers to be taught in our communities. We have literature in English, but as I mentioned in senior one and two, English will be integrated with literature. So the teachers will teach you that one, but it will become an elective in senior three and four. Then art and design, one, one participant said, why is art not an optional? It is an optional. I'm emphasizing art and design is an optional. So it is important that learners know that. Then performing arts. This is where we have music, dance, and drama. Then we have technology and design. This is where we have an integration of metalwork, woodwork, plumbing, electricity and energy how things work in real life like in the house where you live you have wood you have metals you have uh, bricks and so on or mud and water that makes a house you have water which is running you may have electricity so we, it is an integration a reflection of how real life works then th the next subject is nutrition and food technology this is optional. We would like people to know how to have healthy living style or lifestyle. Then in senior three and four, the comparison subjects are seven. Then the learners will choose between one to two electives. That would total nine subjects. So it is important that we know that there are 11 comparison subjects for the senior ones and one elective for senior one and two. I would like also to emphasize the teaching because many of you have mentioned the teaching style is called learner-centered. And under learner-centered, what are we emphasizing? that the learners work as teams and the learning process follows four stages. What are these four stages? The first stages are discovery. As one of the teachers put it, that they send the learners to find out, to discover new things. Like if I wanted learners, 
to know about one big topic heat egg transfer what would i do i would ask the learners to get a metallic cooking pot and a clay cooking pot and then we i give them water and i ask them boil the water so as they boil the water i will ask them which pot boil the water very fast they are discovering that there is a difference in the way the, met the metals transfer heat to the water and how the clay material transfer heat to the water in that way the learner will now if we ask him how he can assist people to make a clay pot the or wooden pots he will look at the properties of these materials and design very good cooking pots for all of us stage number two is exploration where the learners will investigate will discuss will go and find out more about a given topic for instance if i wanted the learners to know about worship i can ask these learners to first tell me in their home how do they worship then i can ask them to go in the community and find out how different people worship they will come back with very great findings some of them not known even to the teacher how people worship their god so this exploration is key it, we can ask the, the learners like which language to use and how to behave in the market you you can teach the words on the blackboard it is okay but if you send the learners to the market for 40 minutes to buy one item and then we come back to the class and ask them how did you get that item the explanation will be so rich that the teacher's knowledge about how things are bought in the market would, would be seen as small so the teacher also will be learning how the learners were able to bargain how they were able to get some commodities as a bonus and so on so all of those things will come out properly the next stage is the analysis and in analysis the learners are able to find reasons why why things are happening the way they are like now when we were starting ronald got challenges with connection myself when i also started i got challenges with connection so we analyze what made my laptop to go off i start by checking is the mbs on my connection there is it connected to the system what is it then i try i go i start again and check every step in that way i'm analyzing what caused the disconnection then i will say there was some waves were not functioning where here a plane was passing and that made my connection to go off then when the plane disappeared i came back so you 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 analyze and find out the reasons why and you are able to explain to others what happens finally in the learner centered approach the learners one of the learners said they come and present in front of their fellow students that is applying communication you you want to talk to other people and see if you can inform them correctly you are applying you are doing if we ask the learners in if food and nutrition to bake for us a cake they they have known that wheat flour yeast and other ingredients make bread they have studied it through the knowledge through the research but now we give them real 
wheat, Rio, yeast, cooking oil, and so on. And we ask them, make bread for us. The oven is there. The learners are now putting in practice what they have learned. So in that way, We, we are no longer able to hear you, Mr. Murumba. If you are on, if you are still on, we are unable to hear you. Is it me? Stephen, yeah. are you able to hear Mr. Murumba? We have lost him, but he will come back. The plane has passed. Okay. <laughs> We can't hear you. Okay. The, our can first speaker, hear you. Uh, Mr. Mulumba. Yeah, we, we, can't so we can't hear you. We can't hear you. I can't hear you also. And unmute. Mr. Mulumba, unmute. There is a message coming on your screen, um, Mr. Mulumba. Uh, unmute. So we can't hear you. He's going. He's going to unmute. Not yet, Mr. Mumba. Unmute. Am I there? Yes. Now you're here. Yes. So I was saying. One question was that. How can learner, how can we help learners access internet? And how are the learners graded? And what are the examination is like? So I want to start with grading. Learners in the new lower secondary curricula are graded using scores they use scores and the scores are one two three so if a learner is given a task that task will have things that are related to the task if five of them can be presented by the learners. Those learners who present five or more of the things that are related to the task get a score of three. Then learners who present three to four of the items related to the task get a score of two. Then a learner who brings out one or two of the things related to the topic gets a score of one. Here, when we are starting to look at the learner's work, we also look for the learner's name. We look for the dates when the learner is doing the task. Then the second part of assessment in that same, the same task, for instance, if we wanted the learners to write a letter, and this letter, we have what are the components of the letter. So those, all of the components of the letter are related to the task. So that is the first part. Then the second part, what is accurate in these items? What is correct? Is the address correct? Is the salutation correct? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> is the salutation correct? Is the signature correct? So the learners will present again. We look at five items that are correct in the letter and say all of these five are correct. Score of three. Are they? 
then three to four of them score of two one or two score of one then finally we go to the third stage of scoring the learner in the third stage we look at what makes sense in the data if if the data is presented to a head teacher if you are applying for a place in senior one for instance and the data is presented to the head teacher can the head teacher make sense out of it in that way in english they call it the logical flow <laughs> of the data does it make sense are the sentences in a paragraph making sense when i'm moving from one paragraph to another is the transition is the most all of that makes this letter coherent so if the letter has been written by the learner the teacher has to look through it three times and if the learner brings out an extraordinary idea outside the doors known to be in the letter but it makes the letter more meaningful then is given an excellent score of one that is how assessment is going to be like so we shall be scoring every learner in the task and the tasks that are scored are individually done you do them individually other tasks that the teacher gives you like a group work that that one we call it in the language of teaching that we are making you as good as desired like we give you a task of finding out the area grow used to grow maybe flowers in front of the house we can use many learners one measures the length another one measures the width then others go into the calculations and then they come and present and we ask them how did you do it that one we are making you as good as the expert but when we want to assess that we shall bring a task which is novel which you are not familiar with but requiring the knowledge you acquired during the group work and then during that task we want you to mobilize that knowledge you acquired during the research during the projects during the interviews with the people during the class discussion and apply it and when you apply it then as an individual we score you under relevance accuracy and co coherence and excellence so the marks that are scored will contribute 20 percent to the final grade in senior four and one learner asked are we going to do exams each year the schools according to the syllabus they are supposed to assess you only once at the end of the year and the tasks they will give you must be assessed using relevance accuracy coherence and excellence so that the teachers we are going to have another session and we go through that with the teachers as for now that is grading then the other question was about the internet and here we are we are we made ict optional and also like you have seen as we were starting this session you have very many people you study with senior one not all of them are with us here in this session when you look i want to use the analogy of somebody who has 10000 shillings 
to, to feed five people in his home. He does not go and ask them, do you want to eat bread? Do you want to eat meat? Because he has to buy charcoal, he has to buy the food, he has to buy water, he has to buy vegetables from the 10,000. And when you look at 10,000, it will not be enough for five people. If five people eat three kilograms of posho, for instance, or maize flour made into posho, three kilograms may cost in my place here, the each kilo is 2,000 shillings. So three kilograms is 6,000, is left only with 4,000. So in the planning stage, we want everybody to use ICT as it is helping us here during lockdown. But also we are aware Uganda is one of the poorest countries in the world. And we are aware that slowly by slowly, like the way the phone came into Uganda, at first, it was very difficult for everyone to have a, a phone. I remember it was costing 1.8 million shillings. But today, you can have a phone of 35,000 or 50,000 and a good one at 200,000, 300,000, a smartphone. So the technology is there. But as more people get resources, they will be able to use the technology and internet. The good thing we have RENU and we have Uganda Communication Commission. It is trying to do its best to expand access to technology and internet. So schools should be encouraged, the parents, need to be encouraged that the use of technology in learning is becoming a, a normal. It is becoming a normal today. And even the teachers, I hear some teachers who say children should not have phones. Children should not have tablets. The, this project of HELP I think it is trying to inform us that we need to make people first aware, how do we use it? How do we use technology? And we have somewhere to start. So we, shall, we have internet where it is possible now, but we expect in five years time, everybody will be having internet and will be using technology to learn. E-learning like we are in today is now be going to be a normal because the benefits, like now I've not traveled to my office, I'm here, but I'm training, I'm teaching, and we are learning from each other. So take, you know, we need only to know how do we use it. So the people who are already able to use it, should we help us who don't you know? And we start the journey, we look for the money. If I digress a bit, in financial literacy, we say that you must have a goal. So we need to inform our friends who do not have internet now to have a goal that I want to have technology and internet. That is the first thing, it should be clear in your mind. Then you start saving in small bits to achieve your goal. So when you become aware and then you work towards your goal, we shall all have these technologies helping us to do many things, including learning and acquisition of skills. With all that, uh, I would like to say that we are starting the journey of the new lower secondary curriculum and the stages of making it work depend on all of us. We cannot continue doing things the way they were done by my grandparents because as I asked in the beginning, 
in the last three years, we have seen very many things that have changed. One of the things that have changed that I would like to mention to you here is that when you go to a school gate, you find there they are scared taking your body temperature. Yet when I was young, it was only the nurse in a hospital who could take your body temperature. Then I asked my, myself a very big question. How long did it take the Ascari to learn to know how to use the temperature gun and determine my body temperature? It took a very short time and the Ascari can record your body temperature like the nurse who was trained in my youth days was trained for two and a half years to be able to only take body temperature of patients. So we need to start to come to speed with the changes and the new curriculum is preparing us for those changes. I want to thank you all of you for all the questions that you gave me and we shall continue sharing. Sharing is the way to go. As Doom put it in the beginning, help started on the notion, how can we share best practices? And this is one way we can share about the new curriculum, about how to teach. And for the teachers, they need to form these groups. The learners also need to form these Zoom platform groups or team or Google class groups such that they can continue learning even during lockdown. Thank you very much. Over to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Dungu, uh, Mr. Murumba, sorry. Thank you very much, Mr. Murumba, for that exposition, for giving us, as someone has said in the chat room, the behind the scenes of this lower secondary curriculum. Uh, at this time, if Mr. Dungu is available, I would want to hand over to him uh, because uh, we might be headed into the next session. So Mr. Dungu, over to you. Um, thank you, Mr. Ayub, and thank you, Mr. Mulumba. Uh, I think, Mr. Ayub, we might have some bit of uh, questions from, from the audience, if we can allow them to uh, raise maybe some four hands um, so that we, we can take their question. Please, Mr. Ayub. Okay then. So uh, thank you for that guidance. If we have, uh, if you have a question, kindly raise your hand so that uh, we can give you an opportunity to ask a follow-up question. And uh, we'll start with Priska. Priska, your hand is up. So if you are able to switch on your camera, that would be nice. But uh, if it will interfere with the connection, no problem. Switching on the camera enables us to spotlight you on the screen. Okay. Priska, go ahead. For me, my question is, why is it in S3 and S4, why don't we do like the languages as one of our optionals? That's my question. Because I want to do French when I reach S4, so I don't know why. We are okay. going to do it. Mr. Mulumba, would you want to respond to that quick, immediately? When we are designing curriculum, we look at how much can you carry at your age. And learning does not stop in secondary. <laughs> That's what I want to inform you. If there are so many things on a buffet, you don't eat everything at a go. You pick a, a round, and when that round is finished, you can come back to the buffet. So don't lose hope that you are missing your French. You are not missing it. There is still more opportunity to study French if the school did not choose foreign languages. The French will be there like 
some of us, we, during our time, we did not study the computer. But for you, it is there. But when an opportunity offered itself, we looked for the time to learn the computer. And we were able to do it. So, because it is the school deciding the electives, and for you, the learner, your role is to follow the direction of the school at that time because the school looks at what it has. Does it have the teacher? Does it have the books? Does it have all the requirements that enable them to teach the subject? If they don't have them, the board of governors use their wisdom to choose which subjects to be electives. So for you, since you have known that French is there, keep it as part of your goals in life, that when a, an opportunity time comes, I will do French. Thank you. You're welcome. We will take a few additional questions if there are any. Mm -hmm. I invite you to raise your hand uh, for follow-up questions. There is a comment that came in as well. Okay, Mr. Okello. But let me just mention quickly that uh, Charles said ICT is in all subjects of the curriculum. So he mentioned this as you are teaching, I mean, as you are presenting. So let me go to Sam. Sam, please unmute, and then we shall follow up with Daniel Alira. Sam. Okay, okay Sam. Thank you. Uh, earlier on, uh, you highlighted the subjects that are compulsory from senior one to senior two. But uh, I did not see the subjects that will be compulsory in senior four, senior three and senior four. Then uh, I'm wondering, is this going to continue in senior six? Because uh, they, I think there should be a match between what the students are learning in all level and what they are going to learn in A level. So is there going to be another curriculum when these students reach senior four and finish? Okay. I think we don't take that question immediately. My proposal is that we let uh, uh, teacher Daniel ask his question as well. Teacher Daniel. Okay, thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, teacher Daniel. Um, so sorry for joining the program very late. I'm one of the members who would like to always add knowledge on what, you, what I have already. I just got the information a little bit late. That's why in the chat I told, I sent a message there saying that in case for such a program, because I saw somebody posted that there is there's going to be another program for teachers. So I suggest that you make it known to teachers when it's still early so that they prepare for it. Uh, my concern is on the side of assessment. I happen to also teach senior one, and I've undergone through very many trainings of the new curriculum, and I'm also one of the trainers. But I found it hard to explain this type, this part of assessment to teachers. Uh, there are a lot of mathematics in assessing in that part of assessment. The, the RACE, because when the way you are explaining, you are give, saying if a learner gives all the six points, which are all correct, then you can choose to give that learner three for the relevance. Then if a learner makes it a more bit better, we can give that learner also the mark for excellence. But that calculation, once it involves some calculation, and it is very hard for some teachers to do so, especially our counterparts, those who who left mathematics long ago, because there are a lot of math. So my concern would be, if this program, because I see it works very well, if it can be organized frequently, so that most of the teachers get to know how to make those calculations would be better. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Let's go to Mary Judith. The question has been captured. Mary Judith, please go on. Followed by Paul. Hello. Hello. 
Hello. Mary Judith. Hello. Okay, please. I would like to thank. Please you unmute. Sister. sister, we are unable to hear you. I can hear her. Okay. Hello. Go on, sister. Go on. Hello. Go on, sister. Okay, my question is you have the other side of the project, see, in senior one, because we usually have classes, then we go for projects, we go for co curricular activities. And then we have to convince the learners that the co curricular and then the projects are part of their learning. So how should we convince them so that they fully participate? Because if they get to know that it is not recorded or it is not part of their learning, some of them tend to, to reject and do their own things. And it was put there for a purpose. Uh, those who are active enough, they come, into, uh, they come on board and then try to do what we tell them to do. But then the other ones, if they get to know that it is not part of the, uh, the, the scores, they tend to leave it out and take it for granted. So how can we convince them or uh, do we have to, 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 to record the, the scores? And then the other question is, how can we, which projects should we put on board? And then how should, uh, cause we have different subjects. We can say we have uh, projects according to those different subjects. But at times you find that teachers are not ready to do that. Uh, so I don't know, you can advise us. Thank you. Let's go to the next question, sir. That was uh, Paul. Paul, please go on. Paul? Mm, yes, I wanted to ask, uh, where has the new curriculum excelled? Where has it succeeded in? I, uh, thank you. I think uh, Mr. Mulumba, you might want to take those questions. Hello. Hello, we are yes. able to hear you, Mr. Mulumba. I want to thank the participants for the questions and uh, for the sharing. I want to start to thank the teachers that we need to learn every day. And if it was possible, help Renu and UCC should work together and we see that we share as much as possible. So organizing this one, it is a very good start for us. Let us keep learning and learning every day. There is a lot to learn. And the, when you stop learning, some people say you, you, you can be forgotten. So I don't want the teachers in Uganda to be forgotten. I want them to be lifelong learners. You need to learn something new every day. Number two, uh, about the ICT. ICT is an elective in senior one and two in terms of subjects. But when in terms of delivery, in the terms of methods of teaching and learning, ICT is integrated. And I would expect that people who have English, mathematics, those who have very many subjects per week, six or five subjects per lesson is per week, at least they should be in the computer lab every week. For agriculture, where we have only two periods in a week, at least in a month, we should be having our double in the lab. So because we are in the fourth industrial revolution, and if we don't make each and every learner to know technology, it is us who are doing a disservice to our people. At NCBC, we have produced a customized classroom tablet. This one is accessible to everybody. It has all the subjects and the basic content for each subject. We, we did start in 2019. We had already 
put these customized tablets in 15 schools. Like in Mbale, we have Navumari High School and Navumari CD School. We have Atapara and we have in uh, Satito Winyi. We have uh, St. Charles Ruanga Kasasa. We have Mpumude CD School. So a number of schools have a customized classroom tablets. Navisunsa girls bought on their own. Namagunga girls also bought on their own. And in Deje and Seta School, Seta and Seta School. So those are customized tablets. So ICT is for everybody for all the subjects as part of the teaching and learning methodologies. But it, in terms of the menu, it is a subject which is an elective. Then the sister, Mary, you are right. We have three activities we have to do after 2.50. Like on Monday, it is library time and research. Here we expect learners to go and read anything of their interest. If the learners have been in a class and they have journaled something they would like to research on, Monday between 2.50 and 5 p.m., that is the, what they have to do, to go and get materials and of their interest and read and research and get more information from the encyclopedia. Like now, since we are not at school, the library time now is to go to the Google. You find any search engine and type in what you would like to, 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 to read about or some a question you still had and then Google or any search engine would help you to find more information which can help you understand that. So the Google or the other search engine, you find more information. Then on Tuesday, we had put projects according to, let me just divide the activities into the days. Tuesday, let me put their projects. NCDC is preparing guidelines for projects. But what I want to share with you right now, four subjects will have projects in a term. So out the 12 subjects, by the end of the year, all the 12 subjects will have projects. So not everybody should be doing projects in term one. Not everybody should be doing projects in term two. Only four teachers should be involved. Normally, the way I understand projects is that they are multidisciplinary. They don't only work in one subject. So teachers can work together and form a project. A project should solve a society problem. It is not just doing things which have no value to society. So we must choose a project. Like if I used agriculture, can you work with food and nutrition? Can you work with the technology and design on that side, but also English language and mathematics, four subjects. And we do a project of the importance of poetry to my community. So the learners must demonstrate the importance of poetry to their community. Or another example would be making a coffee shop in my community. So that one will involve entrepreneurship, will involve agriculture, will involve mathematics, will involve English. And when the learners have done it, different groups of learners can form different coffee shops, serving different segments of the customers. So in that way, the project will achieve more because the community will benefit and the learners will learn that we can do different businesses around one concept, which is how society works. So in that way, learners will go a long way. There is a project of youth awareness 
about COVID-19 in the English language. So, and the learners can work about how to create awareness of COVID-19 in our community. How do we do it? So it is a communication, or oh, it is about how do you deliver information to the community about a society problem? Not, I don't think that everybody is aware of all the SOPs and how they are implemented. So learners can work around that, create awareness because COVID-19 is not going to go in one day. I've read about the 1920 Spanish flu. It took eight years to get out of the communities. So even COVID-19 is going to take many years in the community. So we need to create awareness in the communities about COVID-19. So that can be a project and it will involve about three subjects. Mathematics will be there. You can bring in history such that they look at the history of the different pandemics and then language and mathematics, which then food and nutrition, which food items are eaten. During COVID, we have been taking lemon, we have been taking ginger and so on. So all of these will come in your vacado. So the learners will look at all those and make a project which they can now, at the end of the project, the learners must present it to a community, an audience which is not the school. So it is not just doing things. The community must know. <laughs> and then the community will score you. And it will be, the assessment will be taken because it, it, it will be picked and the other calculation is we shall leave them to your neighbor. Then uh, on Wednesday, it is debate. Wednesday will be debate. Topics should be given to the learners well in advance to prepare. And then you come in and debate, like we could debate on Zoom here. I see an opportunity of using Zoom to debate. If help can create a topic where we share it with the learners and then the learner look for the ideas they will present. And then on the agreed day, we go on Zoom, all of us, and we listen in, they debate, we raise our hands if we want to point of information such that we learn parliamentary procedures. So it is possible to do all of this debate is important and we have parliament right away from home. So people need to learn how to discuss in a civilized way. It is important. Then on the next day would be Thursday, we have another activity, which is the we have sports and games. Clubs is another activity. Learners need to join clubs. The school should list their clubs. The current leaders of the clubs should come and campaign among the senior ones or do a recruitment campaign, recruiting the S1 to the different clubs. Each learner in senior one should have a club where he or she belongs and then participate because after school, we work in groups. We don't work individually after school. We work in groups and you must be functional. So the earlier the learners get an opportunity to participate in clubs and see how the leadership changes, how leadership is acquired and how people manage things as learners. Then we are making them very assured individuals. Then finally, sports and games on Friday. Every learner should do a sport or a game. And then we have sports competitions as a school. But when the learners of senior ones are very, very active, and you know a healthy mind is a healthy body. So we need to prepare the body to be healthy. And it's, the time for that is between 2.50 
and 5 p.m. Thank you. I think where has the curriculum succeeded? Competence-based curriculum is, is very successful in Germany where it started in 1634. They learned by doing. In Africa, countries that have taken on competence-based curriculum, before I come to our neighbors, let me start from Z Z Zambia, Namibia, South Africa, Botswana. Then coming here, our friend neighbors in Kenya have taken on competence-based in 2017. They came to my office to benchmark because we started this program of changing the curriculum in way back in 2006. And we have achieved it in 2020. Rwanda started the competence based in 2013. It is a learning journey. If you want to learn more about competence based, the Google, the technology is there. You can first also see where is competence based in the United States of America? Where is competence based in Australia, in China, in Korea, in Belgium? and so on and then you will see that there are many countries that are approaching competence based according to the resources they have and they have gone a long way i would like to stop at that thank you thank you thank mr you, um are you i know we have run out of time we are friends, parents, students, and teachers, we request that you just give us 20 more minutes. We are going to finish up with this. And uh, our next steps are in the chat, but I want Mr. Ayub to flash our home, flash our home. So that Before you go there, be Ronald. Yes, Mr. Mulumba. Uh, Mr. Atul Sam was in and is uh, one of the parents and uh, one of the school owners in Lira, I thought is the one. So I would like to hear from him. What is he saying? Ah, his hand is up. Mr. Sam. Yeah, I think hand up. Excuse me, it's hard to log in there. Uh... What, what Mr. Atul Sam. Thank, thank you, thank you Are very you much. Yes, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm here listening in with my son, Joshua. Alisa has been in a number of disengagements uh, regarding uh, the lower secondary school curriculum. But as, as, as Matthias clearly puts it, uh, this needs a lot of relearning and learning over and over again. And uh, I'm confident that this is something good for, for the education system in this country. My only other question today is, uh, are we going to see this going to the primary education sector? Because the educa primary no. education section, because uh, the students that come to secondary are prepared from there. If, if we would do this, the competence-based learning and the group learning, if we could start it early, so that by the time they are coming to secondary, they are ready into it. Uh, that would add more, 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 more understanding to to the system. All right, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Sam. Greetings to Lira and Lamo area. Thank you. Now, I want to answer that question with the one who asked: Are we going to have senior six? review they are together they are related so the primary curriculum when it was reviewed in 204 it was made competence but the shortcoming was how to implement it and now the primary curriculum is due for review <laughs> the only thing i don't know when it will start but it is better we make it more competence based for senior six Discussion is have already begun uh, under the review of the government white paper. Uh, they have asked NCDC to do a needs assessment. And this needs assessment 
is finding out do we still need senior six or not and if we need it can we make it competence based so a needs assessment this financial year is going to be done or carried out by ncdc to see the future of senior six and how we can repackage it to fit in this rapidly changing world because if only a hundred thousand students sit senior six out of three hundred thousand who sit senior four there is a big question there is senior six attractive then for the primary school if we can change and emphasize competence based already the they are stepping stone is already made because in p1 p2 p3 they are on the themes and a theme like my family is a theme it is how real life works you are teaching the children how real life works and what they can do in their family my village they know how the village works and what they can do in their village so that is competence based the only challenge is when we transit to p4 where it is supposed to be competence based somehow the nuts were not tight enough we need to tighten them as we prepare to review this primary curriculum uh, otherwise learning about the competence based curriculum is a continuous process and all of us let us be prepared and pray that people who can organize us and we work together as a team use these technologies to share this information to go a long way because we cannot have physical meeting all the time it may not be there thank you so much Okay, um, thank you, Mr. Mulumba. We cannot thank you enough for accepting to be here today, but also to continue with us on this journey of reimagining the new curriculum in, within the e-learning environment. We are going to do three things uh, now. One, we, we want to tell you the next steps. The next steps, and uh, Mr. Ayub, you can now flash our home. The first step is that I have put in the chat our WhatsApp group and request uh, that you allow the students to join our WhatsApp group and we monitor that group, but it will be quick and easy for us um, to be able to inform you of the next activities on WhatsApp. Secondly, we want to show you our e-learning platform that we are going to begin creating activities for senior one on this e-learning platform and uh, how you will be, of course, we shall be training the students and teachers on how to join the e-learning platform, but Mr. Ayub is going to show us. And after that, I will also want to introduce you to, to our plan of how can we interact in a discussion like this? How can you visit our e-learning platform without using a cost on your data with a free service? I want to tell you a few things that we are piloting. Unfortunately, the owners of the uh, pilot program did not come, but we are here, the users, to speak about it. So, Mr. Kalema, in three minutes, what can you tell us about the home? Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Dungu, uh, for that. Let me use, I, am I muted? Let, are you able to hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Let me use a minute or two to show you part of the platform. Our platform is a learning management system. We have put some content there. You can have discussions on it. To access the content, you need to register. But today, I have opened up one course, which you can view for two hours. Then we shall close it. You'll need to register. So you go to help.sc.ug, it will take you there. Ordinarily, you click login right up here in the top right hand corner and you register. And then we shall follow it up. But what we've done, there is a form which Mr. Dungu shared 
we are asking you to register in that form so that I can register you next time you come in, you'll be able to just log in and move on. We'll continue to provide you with support when uh, on, on WhatsApp and other channels. We also hold regular meetings, so we shall be able to support you. So when you go to this platform, now you'll see at the bottom here, three categories, community outreach courses, teacher training courses, and premium courses. What are they? Community outreach courses are courses where we have you and others, students. You can register, we can add you. Teacher training courses are for teachers where we train them. Premium courses are courses which we reserved initially for the four schools that started this project. We started in uh, Nabisunsa, Gayaza, St. Mary's College Isubi, and Busoga College Mweri. The students of those schools are registered here. So until later, we shall open. When you participate in the community outreach courses and you are very active, you are very disciplined, we can upgrade you to this section. Otherwise, many people are here. So I click the community course, it opens and shows us subjects which are currently available, which have content. So it has showed us physics, mathematics, physics, English, ICT, geography. Other courses are being developed. Now the one I've opened today is physics, so I click it. Assuming I'm registered, so I click physics, okay? Now I reach this place. Up to this, by the up to this, you are not registered. You're just clicking. And then I've opened up senior two. So you click it, senior two physics. See, it may ask you to log in as guest. It may not ask you to log in. So we go to senior two. It is open today. Then let's click one topic, sample mach uh, simple machines. So as an example, you keep clicking, just click, read and move on. And then it provides us with the information. So we do have our course, having been developed by expert educators, teachers. Now you can navigate. It shows you the notes, the illustrations, videos to explain, worked examples, photographs, etc., etc. So that is how we structure most of our courses. Then if you're done, you say next. It illustrates, it gives you videos, it gives you notes, which you can use in class. You can even download questions and use them. Let me go to another area, progressive assessment. It even asks you questions, revision questions, for example, it puts a question here, and if you want to answer, I've picked that one, then you click, check, it marks you. If you fail it, it tells you, you can say, show me a solution, or oh, I want to retry. Let me see, show me a solution. I am a laser student, it calculates for me, it tells me this was the correct answer. I go to the next one, I revise. If my internet is not very good, just like it was today, I say, no, let me print. I click here, it will open for me a print area, and then I'll download that material and use it. At the end of the chapter, it will say, okay, this is what you've done. This is what you did. It gives you a summary of the chapter and what you did. The content is being developed by teachers. The content is also being developed by students. Today, for example, we had a seminar and the students produced materials. The content which the students produced today in the seminar has already been put up. So this is student material. We had a seminar and here are the solutions that the students generated. To use this platform and access detailed resources, you will need to register. To use our platform, and continue 
accessing those detailed resources, you will need to register. We need to know you. We need to know which school you are from. We need to know your intentions. We have opened up that one course for today for you to explore, but join us by registering, by filling the form, and by attending our programs. We are looking forward to sharing with you. Thank you very much. Mr. Dungo, over to you. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Ayub, and thank you everybody for keeping with us up to now. It's 5.20 and we just need 10 minutes of your time. The bigger question is the internet is costly and the people far off in Lira, in Gulu, in Katakui may not be able to access. Now, we want to introduce a new platform. Today we have been on Zoom, but now we are migrating slowly to what we call the big blue button. And the big blue button offered to us by the Research Education Network Uganda, I talked about them at the very beginning, and they're supposed to be here to tell you about their services. Now, I'm going to ask you as we talk here to click on that link uh, in the chat room. That link will ask you for a code. You have to input this code 877697. Then it will ask you for your name. Then you enter your name and then you will be on another platform where we are going to migrate. But before we migrate, we want to wind up here officially and then migrate there to test that uh, platform. So that platform, if you are on MTN line, My personal phone shows that I'm not connected, but yet I'm speaking to you. So it's not a leakage. It is because of what they call zero rating um, a platform. So MTN, you are ready to go. Airtel, we have to know your number so that we submit your number to Airtel through Renew, and they will send you a small bundle, 524 MBs on your phone, to confirm that you are zero rated, but that data will not be used. You can't use it for anything. You can only use it when you come to this platform of ours or you go to the e-learning platform Mr. Yuba has just shown us, but the data will not expire. It will remain there until when we tell them that please eliminate this number, we no longer work with them. So what we want to experience today, despite the fact that you have data is how do we go to the big blue button? But we have also said that every Friday starting 13th August at 4 p.m. and Mr. Mulumba talked about Friday PE. Now Friday from 14th August, sorry, from 13th August, Friday, we shall have S1 session. If you don't come back to the WhatsApp, you just get hold of this big blue button address and every friday click on it you will find us and then we shall give you even a better link but, but for the teachers you know also that we are having a second session on 14th august for to continue with this reimagining the new curriculum because we want to write materials that we can put on our e-learning platform. We want to train ourselves in the best way to handle the new curriculum, even when we are at home. For parents, I just want to say that your role is very clear in this. You must allow the students to discover, allow them to explore, send them to the market. The English language teacher will tell you you on Zoom like this, that they and write a report. So you need to allow them to explore and support them in the analysis and in preparing their presentations going forward. So the parent, you are going to be a learning parent in this, you can't keep away. However, for us, we want to sort the technology component and we want to bring the teacher to your home 
and we want to bring the right activities to your home. The teachers who are here, we want you to go back in your lessons. Wherever you are coming from, I know you are hosting, you are holding S1 sessions. We want you to do a good job. So we will train with you and you go back to do a good job. So parents, I want to thank you for your time. We are not going to have any concluding remarks more than these here. No more comments here, but we want to transfer to a new platform. And I hope all the 26 people here will afford to go there. So for now, I want to stop talking and request that you click on that link. You carry that access code with you. You remember your name and let us meet on the new platform. I will request my colleagues, Charles, Ayub, um, Stephen, to quickly move to the other platform and begin to receive the um, teachers and the parents and the students. I will stop highlighting, um, spotlighting here so that I see who is left here as we migrate to the new platform. It's a good feeling to be in a free environment, but it's also something we want to test out so that our friends elsewhere can afford to learn with everybody. Our wish is that we reach every single senior one student, every single teacher, wherever they are during this lockdown, through this environment. And the only way we can do that is by going on a free platform. So let us go and explore. I will check to see who is joining. And I can see quite uh, nine people have joined there. I have 26 people on this side. So I will keep here a bit to make sure you go on that side. So please, um, the people who are still here, look into the chat, click on the big blue button link, take the access code, enter your name, and let's go to the other platform. I'll now stop talking a bit here so that I see what is happening on the other side. But I will come back to pick the last person. I hear two voices. Here. Yes, it's because I'm speaking here and they're speaking on the other. Two people we are talking at Then we shall be giving you a chance. In case you didn't get a chance to that side, please, you can raise up the hand and then. So if you are still here, you are in the wrong place. Click. I beg, I beg your pardon, how do you go chat. and register? I beg your pardon, how do you go and register? You click in the chat, look in the chat. Please look, look in the chat and click on the link. People are asking uh, questions the other side. You are still here. Click on the chat. Uh,
The judge. Adrian, I can I can't see that link now. I can't see the I can't see the the link, please. Once you want to log in directly, you can log in as a guest. Once you can log in as a guest, you can be able to access a few like of our courses that are available on that platform. But we are going to, in case we have registered, uh, Mr. Yobi is going to be registering you. Okay, please. Thank you. Able to this link on okay, thank you. Otherwise, I'm closing tonight now.